Buonasera Apostoli del Benessere de Bianchi. Going to start off that way because I'm going to tell a story uh, in a second about some Italians that I met back in Vegas actually a couple weeks back. Perfect story. Been meaning to mention it. Been forgetting. Going to mention it here. Before I do, greetings Apostles for White Well-Being the last and only hope for Western kind from the Blue Ninja on the evening of Wednesday, October 12th from Graysville, Illinois. Don't ask me where Graysville is because I have no clue. It's just where the Blue Ninja um, needed to stop for the night. All my best and warmest love to Wilhelmine and Matthew Bayer, The Blue Ninja 2, Brad C., The Blue Ninja 3, Angry Angel Ant, The Blue Ninja 4, um, Irish Ice, Art Acrobats, Raymond Foster, Elaine Sabatino, Sarabella, and Yiz the Eunuch. By the way, Yiz, if you're seeing this, I heard you're having a camp out. Um, in your neck of the woods, I presume. Um, so, if you got space for one more, I'd love to come. Um, just throwing that out there. Um, and then, of course, all my best, everyone else. Shauna Shaw, No White Guilt, no Way Guilt Clips. Um, who stands head and shoulders above so many these days. Uh, Nancy Drew, Vivian Fire, DHMC, Justin, Anna, Yield, European, Coastal Rains, Buddy Duddy Full, Base, Red Bell Boycott, Coke Products, Azimuth Clark, Reptile, and everyone else. Um, so, the, just wanted to mention a few things here, folks. Um, first, to just follow up. <laughs> on what I got cut off saying on the last video, the last little tail end, I put on a little short, uh, like 14 seconds, and that was just, you can probably tell the, the tail end of the last video I made yesterday. Um, and I intended to talk about that more, but essentially I want to follow up a little bit on that. Uh, and then the story about the Italian couple I met in Vegas. Uh, one brief clip from the movie Caddyshack uh, with a meme pathogen um, and um, a very familiar meme pathogen but maybe stunning to see it in a movie a relatively modern movie like that just to show how relentless the anti-white narrative has been especially from World War II um, and why it's so deep-seated in people's uh, conscious and subconscious. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about the religion of anti-whiteism. And then finish off with the reaction, the choice that a lot of whites have, which is fight or flight is what a lot of it comes down to, I think when faced with the severe anti-whiteism that we're dealing with today in white erasure. Especially if they are if they come across any of us and get exposed to white well-being, the going free lexicon, uh, courtesy of the great Jason Kuna, and so on and so forth. Any of us that tells anyone about this, white people have a choice to make. They can go right or they can go wrong. They can, they can they can fight or they can flee is what I think a lot of it comes down to at that time um, so those are the things here today uh, number one to follow up on what I was saying about how have whites gotten into such a bad situation how have whites gotten to the point where we've been erased so much and just like uh, the great Jason Kuna, Mr. No White Guilt, was saying the other night, uh, 
last night on his Jason Goes Political. Just like he was saying that our civilizations now in the West, they're, they're an echo. They're nothing but an echo of what they, of what our forefathers built. Um, he's 100% right about that. That's a great way to put it. Um, it's, it's just the faintest echo that we see now. Nothing more than that. Um, you know, <laughs> our civilizations are almost all but erased and destroyed and uh, collapsed. They're, they're just barely standing <laughs> on just a couple of twigs, basically. Um, but they're nothing like what they once were. They're nothing close to even being functional Western civilizations. Nowhere close to the way Western civilizations are supposed to function. So the way Jason um, uh, Kuna put it was, was perfect. It's just an echo. The faintest, ever so faint echo is what we hear now is what we have now in the West. It's it's just nothing, really. As he said, it's like being in a canyon and you, you, can't, you can't see what you're really looking at, you know, which would be our civilization. We don't even have, it's not even there to really look at anymore. All we can hear and pick up is just evidence of it, the remains of it, just evidence of what once was. But it's, it's really no longer there anymore. We're just looking at the footprints, you know. Um, so, uh, that was a brilliant way to put it. Now, how did it get to this point where our civilization, our people have been all but erased, so very heavily erased? Well, what I started saying on the last little short clip was that it's simply because we have not defended ourselves and I think that's most of the reason um, is that we just we haven't defended ourselves as Western kind and we can all probably surmise that we can all see I'm sure that if we would have defended ourselves anywhere along the course of history that the anti-white attacks were coming we could have greatly um, thwarted the attacks. Um, we could have greatly reduced the harm that was coming our way. Uh, we probably would have been pretty successful in, in defending ourselves. The problem is not our capability of defense, it's our desire to defend and then the uh, the method of defense has to be the right one so for a lot of history there hasn't been enough of our people defending and then the few the relatively small percentage as far as I know that do try to defend uh, have such an uphill battle um, that they get defeated and more importantly than that I think more significantly they've used the wrong methods um, so we need to have more white people defending themselves ourselves and more using the correct methods so firstly there's not enough doing it there's a lot I mean there's us but in the big picture I think we can all agree there needs to be a lot more um, and Lord willing, our numbers will keep growing, but they need to grow faster and, and as fast as possible. Um, we need greater numbers of white defense, people like us, and we need greater numbers of the proper defense. Um, so I've seen it all. I've seen all the defenses. Um, that don't work, I'm sure we all have. There's one defense that works, and that is defending us on 
on the basis of race, on the basis of being white. Uh, that's what works as Western kind, um, as we all know. So, simply put, we just we just we need to really just remember how to defend ourselves. For the greater part of history, as far as I can tell, why should haven't defended very much? Just let themselves be open targets. We got to really stop that as a group and remember how to fight. And that's what I might as well mention here that, you know, a lot of whites have the, the flight response, fight or flight. Whites have had that just really just ingrained into them. Just whites have been trained and conditioned to, to flee, to be cowards, uh, to be soft and all that. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. I mean, we are up against great opposition with the anti-whites, the anti-whiteism. A lot of whites are too scared to even find out about it or enough about it. And the ones that do face up to it and learn about it and learn the battle that we have on our hands, a lot of them have that have the wrong response of then fleeing the flight response because they see how how great of a battle it is and how significant our opposition is and so a lot of them just have this knee-jerk response to flee flight well we got to change that folks no more flight and a lot more fight. No more, no more, when it comes to fight or flight, choose fight, not flight anymore. Whites have chosen the flight option way too much. And that's what we have to, uh, to, to unprogram out of us and recondition ourselves to, to be fighters again, to have the fight response. We have to do it consciously for a long time until it becomes more automatic. The fight response, folks. We have to force ourselves to do it. Because, why? Because that's the only way that we can attain safety and prosperity and our destiny. Once again, it's the only way that we can have a future. We have to fight for it because we're being attacked. As we all know. Um, and of course we do this with our words, with our lexicon. Very simple, peaceful, anyone can do it. Um, Now, I'll share the story here about the Italian couple I met in Vegas. Uh, it was awesome talking to them. Um, I met them. I was staying at a, a hotel. They had a casino there, of course. I play a little blackjack from time to time. Sometimes win money. Sometimes lose money. Um, but uh, I play the best odds that you can possibly play normally. Like any good Westman, we study what we're doing and we be the best we possibly can at it, even if it's playing uh, cards at a casino. We like to win. Um, so I met this Italian couple. Absolute honor. It was awesome to see them, as always. You don't see too many Italians uh, around America, it seems like, these days. I mean, real Italians from Italy, at least I haven't recently, uh, and um, they were from Sicily, Sicilia, and it was a couple, a young man and woman, probably younger than me, and uh, the guy didn't speak much English, so it was the, the, the woman, the young lady was doing most of the talking to me, and my Italian is so rusty, 
um, that I could speak Italian with them. Anyway, was talking to both of them though. The guy understood bits and pieces to the young lady. Her and I had a, a great conversation. Turns out they had both, they had a little, they were on a little vacation in America, seeing some different places in America, um, traveling around a little bit, hitting some of the highlights. They were on, they were gonna go from Vegas to uh, the New York area, I think. And they have friends and family, uh, or at least some friends, I think. Some friends and family around the country. Anyway, you know, New York is a, is a spot for Italians. Uh, Florida, as a lot of us know. Anyway, I told them that I grew up in Florida, West Palm Beach, and she said, oh, no way, we've been to West Palm Beach. So that was kind of cool to talk about that. Anyway, the conversation, we had a lot of things to talk about with them being places that I have grown up in in America and so on and so forth and then I told them that I've been to Italy I have Italian heritage my name Lentini is Sicilian where they uh, where they live in Sicily but of course I'm not Sicilian uh, looking I have my genetics I take after the northern part which is from my grandmother rather than my grandfather um, and so just talking about that with them was a lot of fun. I have relatives still uh, still in the north of Italy. I've been there, I've visited them, I told them all about that. And it was great just talking with, with this Italian couple about that stuff and, um, and how awesome Italy is and Italian people and everything. And I was so proud, I wanted to tell them everything I could about my Italian heritage. And, um, Uh, anyway, the conversation went on, and then uh, as it went on, we just started talking about uh, just some of the issues today, and it just sort of naturally came around to, uh, they mentioned this political person in Italy, Georgia, uh, I forget her last name, uh, Maloney or something like that, and she's uh, supposed to be conservative and all that and they were telling me I, I mean I mentioned to them that you know yeah there's there's big problems in Europe in America in all of the West with uh, you know political problems we started the conversation that way and and uh, you know immigration was one thing uh, that I brought up and and then this young lady she said oh but now there's a change in Italy because the people in Italy are tired of all the immigration and stuff and you know they voted in this hardline right wing Georgia Maloney or whatever her name is and I, I hadn't heard of her before uh, she mentioned this 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 new uh, uh, politician in office in Italy and said oh okay well that's good but of course you know it doesn't mean much to be conservative uh, nowadays as we all know so we remain skeptical but anyway that broke into the conversation and I said well I said I just said flat out the the real issue is um, is uh, anti Bianchi anti Bianchi uh, which would be anti-white in Italian and I just said that's the real issue it's anti-whiteism in Italy in all of basically all of Europe, in Western Europe, in um, most especially, and then all the other Western countries, America. And I said, I said, look around, how many non-whites do you see in Vegas? A lot. Who's doing all the jobs? Non-whites, working in the casinos, etc. Um, they looked around, they were just like, yeah, <laughs> can't deny it. Um, I said uh, it's a similar type of thing in Italy I know throughout Europe and it's, it's a common thing throughout all the West and what it is is it's whites are being erased white people um, gente gente bianchi um, in Italiano if I got that right gente bianchi are being erased and uh, this is anti-bianchi this is anti-whiteism 
people at the top and in power, they're anti-white. That's why this is happening. That's why they continue the migration is to replace whites. I explain this with our lexicon as gently but uh, directly as I could. And they couldn't argue because our lexicon works like a charm. But they did have a lot of mean pathogens and they just kind of wanted to disagree. And I could tell they just, they had this, but they, they couldn't, they never outright disagreed with me. But they had these pathogens coming up that you can just see. And they have this, this disbelief, this cognitive dissonance that that doesn't line up with their beliefs. But yet they can see that it's true. So it puts them in this cognitive dissonance state and they're just kind of stunned. They, they don't know what to say. They can't deny what you're saying but they're the pathogens are preventing them from just jumping on board with you full force usually just throws them into this chaotic state because it contradicts almost all of what they hear in mainstream media and you're using different words and that also throws them off but it all makes sense um, and it takes most people some time to process it and so you know you know when people are like that you can just understand that they're in a stunned state and say i, I know it's new there's a new words there's a new concepts just you don't have to give me a response just you know just just keep it in mind just consider what i'm saying you know it makes sense doesn't it and they usually say okay yeah and just 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 keep it in mind when when you go about your life and just what you observe from here on out and just just keep what I said in mind and see if it lines up with it anti-whiteism white erasure and, and other things and it will align with reality as they observe things so you just let them have the chance to to have these concepts now um, in their heads and then when they see things happening in the world they'll uh they'll think about them in terms of anti-white and so forth and they'll be able to make sense out of it more hopefully is the idea um but you know i think that's a good way to just say just consider it just just keep it in mind as you observe and you'll see that these things are true but you don't have to respond now just just think about it in the future and and they they heard me out on all that and they were really gracious about it but i could tell just like a lot of whites have they have this these pathogens come up and it just it prevents them they're they're in this state of mild shock and they they can't they the pathogens are preventing them from just fully agreeing with you which is what a part of them wants to do and what they should do if it wasn't for all this sickness inside of them. Um, but if that's the case, you just leave it alone. Um, because if you push, then they'll usually push back. And, uh, you know, you need to let them have time. But I could tell they did, did hear me out on this stuff, but I could tell there was always this reservation. There was always this, eh, they just weren't ready to go for it. You know, it makes sense, but people just, they're just not ready to uh, pull the trigger, to take the plunge. They're just, they can see it's the right thing. They can't argue with it, but a lot of people, they're just, they're just not ready at that time. So, and that's because of all the mean pathogens. If the pathogens were not there, people would just say, oh yeah, of course, I'm on board. Where can I find out more about no white guilt and going free and, and everything else? Um, and they'd just be totally into it. They'd be just, oh man, first thing I'm going to do is go to this website, knowwhitegilt.org. I'm going to just just absorb it all like a sponge. That's what that's what everyone should do. Um, but the pathogens prevent this. And I could tell as I talked. I even mentioned. I said, look, I'm I'm supporting Western kind. That is my stance. Because of course, when you talk about this stuff, a lot of people think you just hate non-whites. You're just against those non-whites. So you always have to preface it and say, look, my position is only that I am for, since they're Italians, sangre italiano, blood, fratella, 
the Sorella there, fellow Westerners, Europeans, I said, look, I, I am supporting Europe. I support people of uh, Europeans and people of European descent, essentially white people uh, of the West. It's my position. I am supporting you, us, all of our people. I am not against anybody, not against any race or group of people at all. I said, I am simply interested in supporting Western kind. And I said, because Western kinds are the one kind are the ones that are attacked. This is where they will kind of have those pathogens come up and they will disbelieve you on that uh, a lot of times. And you just say, trust me, it's true. You can give some examples, policies that are anti-white, so on and so forth. But ultimately, it's just we are being attacked. Trust me, we are being erased. Look at the migration. The purpose of all that migration, non-white, into all Western countries is to replace white people. Notice how the white population has gone down significantly in everyone's lifetime, no matter how young or old they are. You can say, look, in your lifetime, what's the population of whites done? It's plummeted. No one can deny that. That's what I said. What's happened to the whites? There's a lot less of them around in Italy. Same in America, same in all Western countries. Okay they have to agree. Um, the white population has gone down, the non-white population has gone up, it's no secret, it's because of forced migration, immigration. Um, and uh, no one can deny those things, and then you just tell them, yeah, that's all being done on purpose, and the purpose of it is to erase whites with the method of replacing whites with non-whites. And they'll usually be like, well, wow, and, you know, like, <laughs> maybe they want to disagree with you, but they know they can't, so they're just kind of like, well, yeah, okay, I guess so. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so, you know, that and a few other things was the conversation, basically. But the more I explain, I even use the word uh, for a black, I use the word... Uh, Negro, which is Spanish for uh, uh, Espanol for um, black. I was just meant to say black, a black person. Negro, and I confused that with Italian. I got them mixed up. Uh, and in, in Italian, I think black is nero, nero. So I just meant to say a black person. I was trying to speak Italian. I mix it up with Spanish with them. And when I said negro, they immediately stopped and said, oh, that's an insult. That's an insult. You can't say that. <laughs> so this is the poison that whites have been infected with. Oh, we can't say whatever the anti-whites don't want us to say. We can't say it. If the anti-whites don't want us to say it, we just, you know, we can't say it. Whatever they allow us to say, we'll just say that. They instantly were just like, you know, drew the line. Oh, we can't insult them, even though we are the ones as whites that are insulted every single day, grievously, and harmed. And they'll just let that happen. You know, and they use the R word a few times, and I explained that, okay, that is actually just a slur against whites. Um, and they're kind of like, wow, like they might have been on the liberal side this couple, I don't know. And I said, just, that's what it is, I can promise you that. Uh, and it's all done through propaganda, the attacks are mostly psychological. A lot of people, it's going to take them time to understand this, you just present it to them and hope that they consider it more, let them have time to process it. Um, but they were quick to draw the line. Oh, no, no, can't say negro, that's that's an insult. I said, okay, I'm sorry, I meant nero <laughs> in Italiano, just a black person. And I was just saying something about, look at look at how many of them are imported into Italy. You know, it's they're not real Italians, they're just there um, to replace whites. I was explaining to them, and they were like, yeah, you know, they're not real Italians. Okay, you know, they have to, they had, they had to admit all this. But at the very end, the more I talked, and it was all pristine lexicon, folks. Pristine, totally above reproach, not saying anything bad about any other non-white group. Purely just supporting us and trying to um, uh, enlighten them about the anti-whiteism that we are under attack, and that I'm interested in fending off these attacks and bringing about some well-being for our people, 
Italians, Americans, and all people of the West once again. So did it with pristine lexicon. But the more I talked, the more this lady was just kind of like, eh, okay, I think we've had enough. And ultimately, they just, a lot of people just have these responses. And that was my point, that they just really can't accept uh, or can't fully accept a message of well-being for them because there's so many new pathogens that come up. Um, and most people, when they first hear about our concepts, they can't just adopt them all right away because if they're brand new to them the mean pathogens will usually be dominant and just overtake and it'll take time for them to consciously override those so you know they were gracious and they they listened to me very thoroughly but the more i went on the more that i could see especially in the in the the young lady who understood more of what i was saying the more she had these meat pathogens cycling through her brain and the more she was just kind of like, ah, oh, let's go. Because she didn't have a response. If, if they don't want to agree, but they want to just leave, it means that they're uncomfortable because you presented them with stuff that puts them into cognitive dissonance and disagrees with their worldview, which has been given to them by the anti-white media, unbeknownst to them. Um, and... They, they know that what you're saying is actually true. It makes sense, it makes logical sense. Um, but it conflicts with what they already have in their heads. So they're confused and they, they, the pathogens are telling them to disagree with you. But the other part of them is like, well, what he's saying actually makes sense. There's that little part of reason still in there. Maybe it's small, but it's there. And they, they don't, they can't really agree or disagree, and they're unsure, and they just want to leave. They, a lot of times, they want to disagree. The pathogens are telling them to disagree, but they, they know that what you're saying is irrefutable. So they kind of feel like, wait a minute, if I disagree, I'm going to actually be wrong here for the first time. And they just start to, it's going to take them time to process all this. Everyone has to come to an understanding that they have been wrong. They've been led wrong. It's not their fault. It's okay. Um, and that they should go to the right thing. But we got long-winded on that, folks. I'll have to cut myself off. The video is about to end with that story. And I'll get to the other two things I was going to talk about. A mean pathogen of the anti-white narrative from World War II in Caddyshack, if anyone knows what it is. And a uh, golfer, golfer movie and uh, the religion of anti-whiteism and exactly how we handle it. Love y'all, God bless each and every one. Stay white strong, white free, white positive, white protective, and white proud. White resilient, white defiant, white pure, and white pristine. Amen, amen and hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ and long live the West.